Okay, come on, give it up for Marvin Locker. Thank you. All righty, hello. Thank you all for coming to the Lightning Talk. So today I want to talk just a bit about my role as a back-end engineer and how it pertains to a monolithic application moving and transitioning into a service-oriented architecture. So to begin, okay, so how I got into services was my current role, I work for a international ride sharing company. They have a application where you can go and reserve a vehicle for as little as 15 minutes up till hours, days, however long you need. So originally a monolithic application suited the needs. But as, they, as the need grew and they needed to scale, they needed to add more features. There was more and more, uh, there was more and more things that needed implemented into this application and they found that it was a bit tricky to add these changes and make it scalable and testable. So they decided to go down the path with service-oriented architecture. So that's where I come in. I come in to help create the services and at the same time maintain the current uh, platform, which was the monolithic application. So with, within two years and a monolithic application, which for those of you who don't know, is pretty much a unified model of design where all of your components are, are very tightly coupled. Um, they're interconnected and to try and add new logic or features without breaking or downtime is a bit complex. So the alternative, create services. A service, service-oriented architecture, is basically just a bunch of services that communicate with each other. And a service is just an operation that has a specific, well-defined, self-contained task. Very simple, as simple as you can make it to make it scalable and testable. So with that, some of the benefits of the service-oriented architecture Loose coupling. Your services are not connected, well, loosely connected. So they're not dependent on one another, as with the monolithic. With service-oriented architecture, you have a lot of flexibility. You can write your services in any language or platform that you desire. With the monolithic application, you're restricted to a single platform. Um, a huge thing, testing and debugging, right? We all need tests, we all need to make sure we don't have bugs in our code. So now with the services, we can pull each service out, test it thoroughly, and if something breaks, it's easier to dive into one service rather than your entire application. Um, same thing for debugging. If we have a bug in our code, uh, you know, finding the bug, <laughs> and replicating the bug is normally the hardest thing. Once you, once you know what's breaking, it's usually an easy fix. Um, so also with that, scalability. So since your components can be isolated, it's easier to scale up on your services. You can add a new feature in and you can test it because it's isolated from your main app and it's not gonna break in production. You're not gonna have the downtime. Also, reusability, right? We all want to make, uh, you know, uh, something that we can reuse. Why do it twice? Why reinvent the wheel? If it's, already, if it's already coded and we can just grab it and use it again, why not? It saves everybody time. We know it's tested. We know it works. So with that, of course, the, you know, there's a lot of debate. There's also some disadvantages. So there is a huge upfront cost. Unless you start with the service-oriented architecture, which my current role, they didn't. I've, we've, well, they've spent two years on dev time maintaining a monolithic app and creating these services. So you can imagine the upfront expense. But when looking at scaling, hopefully it will pay off you know, in the long run. Um, extra computing. Your inputs are validated as you pass from service to service. So you have more computing, 
the services also can communicate back and forth a lot, so you can have extra, you know, the need for the server, the high-speed server, and a lot of bandwidth. So, like anything else, you know, another disadvantage, if you're coming into a, a service-oriented architecture and you pick up a ticket, you know, to know, to know what service you need to be working in can be, can be a bit of a challenge. So there is some disadvantages as, as well, you know, coming in from the outside. But the nice thing about services, if you make them as, as, as simplistic as possible, it will be easier to, uh, you know, to, uh, to add new features and to know what service you're supposed to be in. So with that, I will come to, uh, you know, final thoughts. Also, service-oriented architecture is not right for, for, you know, all your projects. If you have a short-lived application that's not going to scale, you probably don't need to worry about it until the time comes where, you, you know, you do decide you want to scale. So thank you for listening to my talk. Great job. Thank you. Awesome. Isn't every app really a small app that doesn't need to scale? It's the way I code, and that's why nobody pays me to code. <laughs>